Alrighty, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of whatever podcast this is going to be called. Because at the moment, this is past Gillian talking. And you should congratulate future Gillian because uh, I have no clue <laughs> what to call this podcast, dude. Like, I'm thinking of, sh- of just calling it the Rivera Edge podcast. Or if I should have multiple podcasts for my different topics, like the, the Rivera Edge business podcast, the Rivera Edge fragrance podcast. Or whatnot, I, I have no clue. So whatever future Gillian comes up with, congratulations, dude, congratulations. So welcome everyone to the first episode. So today we'll just really discuss what's what's been happening in life. Cause you know, I have not been posting on Rivera Edge Business for ages now. So most of you I assume are in Rivera Edge Business. This podcast is aimed towards my audience and fan base in Rivera Edge Business. So for those of you who don't know, Rivera Edge Business is my knife making business, my brand basically. Rivera Edge is who I am, that's my stage name for when I do the things I do, presenting my art to the world. It's like an artist name, you know, it's just a it's a stage name. And Gillian's my real name. So call me what you like. But yeah, Rivera Edge Business is my brand. I was really contemplating guys right what the hell i was gonna call the brand because i didn't want to stick with just rivera edge and i didn't want to come up with a whole new name for it so i decided rivera edge business is classy it's straight to the point it is a business it's it's i just like it it's iconic now so i'm gonna stick with it so welcome everyone anyone who's listening to this from the podcast i mean from the instagram post i just did well, I did that about two days ago, let's say, depending on how long I take to edit this. But I really appreciate you coming here. And if you've listened all the way to like this, like what just now, I consider you a true fan or a true supporter, whatever you want to call yourself, because I know podcasts can be quite very, very lengthy and time consuming for most people. And most people will only really listen to a podcast if they really like the topic or the person who created it i know that's me so i don't know about you guys but it really depends i guess but i I appreciate you guys i love you guys so what's been happening so i have not been posting shit on instagram for ages right if you follow my rivera edgy account i'll leave a uh, a link to where you can follow my other accounts if you want to in the about section pretty much but guys i have been through a shitload of shit in the past uh i guess it's been like almost almost two years now yeah almost two years it's i can go into details into all the shit i've experienced in like 15 episodes like it's that much i can talk about my new relationship my failed relationships my experiences in new environments the new people i've met my just development mentally it, i've just learned so much shit and i want to explain to you guys all this stuff which is why i'm excited for this podcast because especially for people younger than me or around my age or even just anyone in general doesn't matter what age you are you know, you know obviously the thing is no matter what level you are in life there are going to be things that people know that you don't know no matter what age you are i'm older than a lot of people Yet, a lot of people who are younger than me will know some things that I don't. So, there's always value to take from everything. And so, I really want to help just push that out to you guys. Like, just really express uh, and explain my experiences and just the stuff I've learned. Because, you know, that's kind of like the thing I do. You know, if you read the bio, you know, I love to inspire and I love to, you know, provide for the people. So, I've been through a hell, a lot of shit. And so, I moved house that's a whole different story which we will discuss in another episode but i moved house and i'm currently living with my girlfriend and she's currently living with her grandma so i won't really go into detail because that's private but that's kind of like what's happening right now we're living me and my girlfriend are basically living um we're basically freaking not homeless but i I guess you could say homeless like we, we don't really live here but we live here But whatever, you know, we're still fortunate to have a place to live. So we're living together. It's been great. And we have no workshop here. Number one, there is no space because all of our stuff from our previous house is is here, right? 
well my stuff not literally everything because you know i live with my mom and brother i don't have their stuff because they didn't move in with me but um legit stuff is everywhere my shit's in boxes my workshop is i guess you could say in a massive box and i've tried to make knives here and not in a mo not in a freaking giving up way or anything guys can't but i've legit tried to make knives here the electricity in this household is optimized for uh my girlfriend's grandma so it does not run my grinder to full capacity i've tried multiple outlets and i don't want to fuck with the electricity because it's not my house so i'm really just not doing knives at the moment there's just like and, and for the quality level that i'm aiming for in my next improved models it, it really i really don't want to do it here it's just not worth it so i've been pretty much planning out and doing like all sorts of random things and just having a gap year pretty much you know getting my mind straight and my priorities in check so not knife making has been a zero you know i have not ground a bevel in ages and to be honest with you i'm still confident in grinding bevels you know half the time when i haven't done something for ages i'm sitting here like shit am i gonna forget how to do it well no 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 no. you know how to do it you'll be rusty a little bit but you're gonna do it that's kind of like the mind state i have with stuff maybe you could take something from that if you if listen to listening to this if you do stuff and you don't do it for a while and i know there's this barrier right you know you want to do it again but you're afraid you'll be shit at it and you'll have to restart no that is not the case and if that is the case just go do it anyway bro life's too short to not pursue the things you want to do pretty much that's one of the biggest things i'll uphold in the content i'll be releasing you know i really don't want people to waste their lives basically you know and not even in an abrasive harsh way but man if you want to do something you know and, and I'll, I'll make videos about this too because i know it's just easier said than done yes but if you want to do something or there's something you want to do the best really thing to do it is to just do it really like there's no other way it's like saying no it's like you don't just beat around the bush and find excuses to say no you just say no it's the same with doing stuff you love you know if you want to do something just freaking do it you know and by doing it isn't just doing it by doing it is taking the steps to do it to be able to do it it's just a whole it's a whole shitload of information we can get into but that's a different topic so anyways i've been um wanting to do stuff on my river edge business for a while now and this podcast is really the big thing for well the big the big step basically to get started again because frankly i have not put in the effort to put anything out because frankly i'm like eh, i don't know if people will like this and whatnot and okay number one for any content creators out there knife makers i don't know if any knife makers are watching listening to this if any of you guys are listening i know who you guys are uh, freaking ned fly knives what's up dude freaking um nick layton Zastra knives. I hope I said that right. I'm sorry. Fucking Jake B creates. Stay dangerous, bro. So um, yeah. If you guys are watching this, I re- <laughs> I really appreciate that. Like, I usually do not seek validation from people, but you guys, I, re- I I respect you guys. I really do. And Chelsea Miller knives. If you're here, I know you get a lot of shit from a lot of people saying that you don't deserve the you know place you have but you do deserve the place you have trust me if you're listening to this which i doubt because she's such a busy person but if you are listening to this what's up all you knife makers out there right um what was i talking about shit i got so carried away praising you guys i forgot what i was about to say shit that's what it is i remember so i was hesitant and frigid to put anything out and I was too worried about what the people would think. Well, the number one thing that I've learned with brand building and just building a fan base in general is that you have to know exactly what you want. What do you want? Do you want to just sell products, make a living and a consistent, high quality environment for your craft or all the shit? And basically, whatever the answer is will determine what you do. And in my opinion, most of you guys, I know most of you guys want to make a living and want to have value in what you do you don't want to just sell knives to make money i know trust me none of you guys are doing this to just make money i know this because you wouldn't be doing that you know think about it knife making is one of the hardest hobbies to profit out of 
legit. This shit people do because they love. Like it is one of the most hardest places to make money off. So anyone who does knife making, I freaking salute you. So, um, like I said, you know, if you're wanting to do this out of passion and out of like love and you want to make a living out of it, in my opinion, authenticity is the number one thing you need to have to, to be able to sell stuff, which is why people who are so um, out there and personal with their craft, they get a lot of love because that's, frankly, you know, if you have a professional state, a kind of personal, relatable state, or even just a admirable, um, you know, fun, fun side to you, or even just, just you, right? Just you. Injecting you into your professional craft is going to garner some attention, you know? P people will see the soul in it. They'll see the people behind it, the craft, and just everything. And frankly, people... You know, where there is an interest, there will be people who like it and hate it, regardless. It doesn't matter what you do. There will be people who hate it and love it. And you want to be as authentic as possible and garner the people who you actually care about to stay there and support you and to help you make a living while you provide for them, you know? So whatever you guys want to post, just post it, to be honest with you. Like, I love it when people just post whatever the hell they want because... While yes, we do have responsibilities to, you know, make, you know, to make, what's the word? Like, yes, we have responsibilities and uh, ex exceptions, expectations of us that we have to provide a certain thing and keep a certain image. At the end of the day, you're going to know that whatever you put out there is your work, your, it's you, and that people's, people's like, 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 you have to know when to not listen to the crowd. That's the thing. That's the hardest part about this all. Because in order to make a living, you got to do what the people want. Otherwise, people won't buy it. But at the same time, you can't just do what people want because then you have no soul in what you do. You know, you don't have the genuine, the authenticity and the value of what you're trying to uphold. Unless you're just a fully on, full on people pleaser, do everything everyone says. That's all good. You know, it really depends. Like I said filter out my advice and my words with you know with a, with a freaking thought you know not everything i say is going to relate to you but i truly believe that what i say can help because i've been through this and i believe that people in the same similar lanes as me can kind of benefit so just take that with whatever but honestly all the power to you guys you do what you want so you know i've been you know frigids posting knives and, and, and whatnot. I've posted a maximum of like three posts in the last year. And that is freaking whack. And honestly, I've been sitting here like I'm literally going to lose some following, which is okay. Here's the thing. People who leave, it's okay. It, it's all good. Like I had a customer unfollow me, you know, <coughs> cost. <coughs> and I was actually hurt by it. I was like, damn, well, why... Why does person follow me? I, I, I legit sell them a knife and everything. But at the end of the day, you're here for the... You're, you're here to provide for people. I'm here... Well, I'm talking myself. I'm here to provide for the people. I'm here to, you know... You know, garner and create content and just substance for those people who want it and stay for it. And if they leave, that's all good. You know, I help them. I shared value, you know, and they're finished. And that's all good. You know, things end things move on new people come so i was like i moved on from that uh it took me a while but i was like oh yeah because it, it, it was it was weird you know it's the first time i've had a long time person unfollow me and i also unfollowed a lot of accounts too now here's the thing it is nothing personal because when i'm building brands i want the everything to be focused and i was following a lot of random accounts not not necessarily people but i was following like a freaking i was following like luxury brands i was following random knife companies and i was actually following like knife makers who i didn't even know because i was just trying to build a following a follow me i'll follow you back and i don't really like doing that so i really i pretty much stuck and followed the people who i've had connections with so if i'm still following you just know that i either a fully 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 respect what you do and i really love it and that's why i'm following it or we have some kind of value to each other and i really appreciate you so everyone else who i unfollowed please do not see it as like you know 
uh, hate or anything. Like, trust me. I wish success for every one of you. I still follow you guys, by the way. Anyone who I unfollowed, I followed on my other account. You know, I, I'm still in the loop. So don't don't even don't think it as that. So, anyways, but for a very edge business, it's gonna be a very very bare minimum. Just the people who I want to share the spotlight with, people who are in the same lanes as me, and and whatnot. So I won't go too much into detail with that. That's for a different topic. My main account, I'm only following three people. I'm following my Rivera Edge business, my girlfriend, and my future brand of fragrances. So that's another thing, guys. So I've been heavily into some numerous topics. So number one, I got back into my invertebrates hobby. So if you guys don't know what that is, it's basically just keeping like all sorts of random stuff like centipedes, spiders, millipedes, like bugs, right? Bug keeping. And I've done a little business with that. I did. I made a bit of profit with that business. So pretty much I breed the bugs and I sell them to people online here in Australia. So it's, it's quite a lucrative, weird business. You know, literally shoving spiders in a box and shipping it to someone's house. Yeah, it's it's a little weird. Um, our hobby was literally on the fucking news. You know, it, it's weird. It is weird, but I love it. It's more of a passion thing for me. Everything here is a passion that I'm finding ways to monetize to be sustainable. So um, I've been doing that. I'm still doing that. And I've been making, well, I have made content. I'll be continuing to making content about it on my YouTube channel and Instagram and whatnot. The other one, the other topic I got into is fragrances. So if you guys don't know, fragrances, just in general, like perfumes, colognes, aftershades, whatever you want to call it, the right term for it is fragrance. So I've been heavily into that. I've been into it my whole adolescent life, basically. I got my first fragrance when I was 15. Well, actually, no, I was, I was 13. And I've just been into it. And I've been heavily into it. Like, I've been into, like, the more deeper context of is that even a word fuck the more contextual side of it all basically i describe fragrances on how they smell the history behind them the art behind them the in, the envisionments the imaginative sides of things the all sorts of stuff because there is a world for fragrance it's weird but all the shit i've mentioned my knife making the bugs, the fragrances, to most people in my everyday life, when I share, oh, what do you do? It's hard for me to say. I just usually say I make knives, I run a business making knives. But no, I run a freaking, like all sorts of stuff. I'm, I'm monetized on all sorts of platforms. So my YouTube is predominantly fragrances as well as the knife making content and bugs. But I pretty much, you know, have that monetized. So I earn money from my YouTube. But I have not been earning money from that because I've not been posting shit. So that's that. Um, my bugs, I sell the bugs. Obviously, my knives sell the knives. So it's really like a... I, I don't really say it because most people find it cringe and I'm really afraid of being judged. But I'm just going to start saying it. But it's pretty much entrepreneurship. It's going... Pretty much taking a path outside of an ordinary uh, employment. Which, nothing bad with employment, by the way. If you're, if you're freaking employed, salute to you. It's hard work. It's dedicated work. It's work. You know, regardless of how people see it. Because at the end of the day, people will hate on 5 to 9s and look up to entrepreneurship. And people will hate entrepreneurship and look up to 5 to 9. It really doesn't matter. Do what you love. Do what you want to do. So that's just that. But yeah, no, I've been telling people, you know, back to the point. I tell people, oh yeah, I, I make handmade knives. I sell bugs and keep bugs. And I review fragrances. And they're always surprised to know that there's a world for each one of those things. Like, there's probably a freaking world for, I don't know, door stoppers or whatnot, a freaking electric fan. There is a world for everything, and it's really strange. I mean, like, take a look at the current interests. Like, there is a world for, I don't know, lighters, freaking video games is a big one. It's, everyone knows that. Um, a world for whatnot. It's crazy. So, anyways. There's a world for everything, and pretty much, yeah, that's that. I don't really know what I was getting up with that. And the podcast is getting quite long, 19 minutes. Well, it's 20 minutes soon. All right, I'll probably end this soon, because I don't want it to be too long. But it is my first episode, so I will be I will be enjoying, you know, explaining this. And I'll probably film another podcast right after this, 
And of course, I will be featuring more people on my podcast. So that's going to be good. And we'll have multiple topics. It's going to be great. Okay. So, you know, that's pretty much my life. You know, lately, I was literally making knives and all that, all that stuff. I, I, need, I need to talk about it in detail if I really want to say shit about it because i can't just say it because it's gonna be a long ass video but basically um from pretty much 2019 onwards i knew i was gonna move out of home pretty much all the shit i wanted to do and endeavors i've needed to achieve i could not achieve there i need to i need to talk about that shit in a freaking separate video but if you're still listening to this i appreciate you guys but basically long story short it was an unhealthy environment for me and I needed to get out. So I did that. I took the, um, what's the word? The respect for myself. And I took, I looked after myself and I removed myself from certain situations that were pretty much affecting me, my mental health. I went through heaps of mental health stuff in the last three years, I would say since 2018 to 2021. This year, I'm freaking, I've never been happier. Here's the thing. Even though that I'm not in a place where I want to be yet. I look around at what I have. I have a fucking... Like, everything, pretty much. Like, if I died right now, I wouldn't be sad. That's the thing. Like, obviously, I want to do all these things. And that's a big goal. But ultimately, what I try to do is... I try to realize that my life at the moment is always the best it can be. But I'm always improving on it. That's the thing. I don't look at shit like, oh, I don't need a be successful in this i'm happy with what i have no 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 no. the point is when i have this mind state and I, I feel like most people should try this not do it but just try it but understand that your life can always be better but it can always be worse you know it's never as good or as bad as you think you know life can always be bad and always be better you're really just gonna weigh it in the things you do pretty much like if you're going to do a certain thing put that mindset of oh this can be better let's do it but if you're just relaxed or you're stressed just know that oh no 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 no. it can be better but right now it's still good you know it's perspective perspective is everything pretty much and i still challenge myself with that you know lots of things i will talk about so um so yeah it it, it was fucked dude like i was man i don't even want to say it but i will say it but i was like suicidal and shit i was vomiting up every day it was really bad and it made me want to quit everything so fuck that man now that i'm out of that i am so much like free here's the thing here's the thing the weirdest shit is that i used to see this knife making stuff was good i used to think that no 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 sorry sorry I used to think that this knife making stuff, YouTube stuff, all my entrepreneurship stuff was hard. But now I'm realizing that it's fucking easy compared to what I had to go through. This shit is so fucking easy. It's weird. But I like, it's not easy. Like, I can just do it. Obviously, I got to put in the work. But compared to all the stuff I've been through, the emotional challenges and obstacles that I have to cross into my own mind, this stuff is easy. You know, that stuff was hard. And it's just weird to think about it it is so weird to think about it but really your mind can be one of your biggest enemies and just being stuck and conditioned to a certain state it's really bad but i'll explain that in a future video or whatnot but pretty much i moved my out of there now i'm home here and with my girlfriend no knife making but i'm making moves behind the scenes of that and whatnot basically so what's gonna happen we are going to... Oh, I should have said this at the beginning. But we're moving house. Right? We're in the process of moving house. There's a place for us. But um, that's probably going to happen in August or September. So it's pretty soon. It is pretty soon. But the knife making is probably going to happen in October or November. Right? Or Christmas. Or even next year. It really depends on my work ethic and just my fundings at the moment. Pretty much. So... At the moment, I can't afford to make knives, but I'm really budgeting and understanding where my priorities are at right now. So knife making is definitely a priority, but I need to prioritize my my environment, myself, and my current like just living states. 
in order to prioritize my profession. You know, you can't just work, 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 and just have, you know, a shitty life. On the other hand, not by shitty life, but I mean like, you know, conditions, condition-wise, pretty much. So that's that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's my life recently. There's more I can talk about, but I won't really talk about it too much here. But like I said, if you've been if you've been listening to this since the beginning to hear and you didn't skip, I freaking salute you. You are a true fan or just supporter. Whatever you want to call yourself. If you think a fan is a little cringe, that's, I, I get it. I get it. You know, especially for someone like me who's tiny. Like my biggest, I, I, I think my following in general is 7,000. Not on Instagram and YouTube combined, but just in general on an average. It's around 5,000, 7,000 um, consistent listeners. And on TikTok too, whatnot. But genuine fans, I think I only have like 20. 20 people who I don't really know in person, but support me and have been supporting me. I freaking appreciate you guys. And it's going to be quite a long journey. Freaking long. It is going to be huge. But I'm really excited. If you're interested in all the other stuff I have to do, please check out my Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. I do numerous stuff. You know, just my life. You know, funny ass shit. If you think it's funny. Um, introspective stuff. You know, fragrances, bugs, whatnot. Everything. You know, just the whole nine yards of what I have to do. So, thank you guys so much for listening to the first episode of the Rivera Edge podcast. And I'll see you guys later. And like I said, just... To take away with this, you know, besides the stuff I just said, you know, just do what you love from the very beginning. Whatever you love to do, understand that in order to start doing it, you're going to know exactly, you know, why you want to do it and stuff will be clear, you know, just, just stuff like that pretty much. But that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Love you guys. See you guys later.